So you have chosen uh, the Authentic Learning Activities for Future Educators session. My name is Jennifer Skomiel, and I teach in Denville at a vocational high school called Morris County School of Technology. We always get a good laugh because our technology isn't always up and running, but that's the name our school chose long ago, and so we have to run with it. So our kids are always making side jokes about the name of our school, but we are a four-year vocational high school. So if you are familiar with us, then I don't need to give this back background, but many people are still unfamiliar that a vocational high school could have a four-year program where our students come as freshmen and then they leave us as seniors and they take all of their academics with us as well. So I'll tell you in a little bit about my journey, but um, I know that as a student who attended this school as a share time student, I started out at a uh, Morris Knowles High School in Rockaway and was there part of the day and then got to come to a vocational. <laughs> Ashley and I went to high school together and then um, we and then I was able to go here in the afternoon, but now we do have the option for a full day. So it's a little different um, if you're not as familiar with a Votech. We're going to start off with round robin introductions. There's not too many of us in the room, so this should be easy enough. I was thinking we could share your name, your school, and just an overview if your program is like a one-year program only for seniors, if it's a four-year program and they stay in it. Just give us a very quick little overview of what your program looks like. So I'm going to start by calling on someone, and that's going to be Ashley. You were going to do that. <laughs> Um, I guess the, 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 the benefits and the drawbacks of knowing the presenter, right? Um, so my name is Ashley Kenya. I am a teacher at Randolph High School. I'm actually a social studies teacher, um, but I am blessed to teach one section of tomorrow's teachers. It, um, we are um, part of, I was part of the formation of our school's first um, uh, CTE program and Jennifer you are helping us with that which is great um and so we do have a pathway a career pathway for our students which includes uh child development um and tomorrow's teachers so we're really excited I think this is my tw how many years Jen 12 years since the last maybe no no not even kidding nine maybe oh, nine okay Teaching maybe eight or nine time. years I've been teaching it. Um, and I'm kind of, I'm the only one. So it's, I'm looking forward to meeting and talking to people about it because I feel like I'm a very much an island here. All right, I'll call on Julie next. Of course, I just put something in my mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. I oh, that's okay. I swallowed. It's okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just finished my lunch at a tuna sandwich. I had to have a piece of candy to get that out of my mouth. <laughs> at least we're so. on Zoom. <laughs> My name is Julie Kudish. I work at Heightstown High School. Um, I have a one-year Tomorrow's Teachers class that is um, made up of juniors and seniors. And I am making it, um, I have a meeting next week with the, with the guidance supervisor. Our um, home ec, I don't know what the new word for it is. I can't Family remember. Family and Consumer Sciences? Yeah, 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 that's it. She teaches a section of um, child growth and development. So I'm making that a pre or co-requisite for tomorrow's teachers. Oh, so I can take that out of my curriculum because this 8,000 pages is kind of a lot to get through in a year. So I don't have to do that. And if I get to teach a section of it or two instead of my real job, that would be great. But this is my, we've had it. We've had this program in the school, I think for five or six years. This is my third year, third or fourth year doing it. Um, and we're actually, we, we, we were supposed to do our visitations for observations this week, but of course we're virtual this week. Oh. So hopefully our, uh, we couldn't do field placement last year or the year before. So hopefully this year we can get back to field placement. All right, thank you, Krista. Hi, I'm Krista Horvath. I am an Italian teacher at Ridge High School in Basking Ridge, New Jersey. Um, I also teach our only section of Tomorrow's Teachers. This is the first year that our school is doing it. So I'm kind of piloting the whole thing. Um, so far it's going really well, I'm totally overwhelmed, but so, so that means it's going well. Um, no, it's not, it, it is going really well. I, I have a really wonderful group of students who are really patient and um, luckily my school has not been virtual at all. And so the, the current conditions really haven't impacted us 
all that much. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting a little bit more clarity, um, especially since the field placements are coming up. So um, I'm interested to talk to everyone else who has more established programs and just learn as much as I can so that I can bring it back to my classroom and hopefully grow my program. Awesome. And that's the thing about this whole conference. When Jeannie and I were planning it, it was the idea that many of us are just departments of one and we need collaboration. We need someone else just to share. I go back to my English department because that's where I had come from originally. So they always help me out with ideas, but I thought the value of this conference is just immeasurable when we realize how much we do need someone else who understands our curriculum. Um, how about Kathy? Uh, so I'm Kathy Cassini. I teach at Delsey Regional High School down in Gloucester County. Uh, this is my fifth year. I was actually a middle school teacher and they moved me to the high school to bring this program. My daughter that I keep referring to teaches a tomorrow's teachers program also and she taught it for a couple years before I was able to get it introduced to our building. Um, our, mine is can be a one or a two year process. If students take it their junior year, they can take tomorrow's two their senior year, which winds up in a nearly full year placement into one or two classrooms. So as of like the last week of September, they'll go out three days a week to a middle school placement. And then as the second semester comes, most of them like to then have an alternative into maybe an earlier or a you know, flipping it back and forth. So they can take it one year as a senior or they can take it two years if they start as a junior. Thank you, Laura. Hi hey everyone, uh, my name is Laura Iskowitz. I am the only one in my high school, North Brunswick that teaches tomorrow's teachers. I've been doing it since 2016. Uh, I, I only take seniors. Uh, my school has also credited for honors. We also do dual program when we can. Um, kids are doing observations out of the building, even virtually. Last year, my field placements were virtual, but we did it. Um, it's probably my favorite course that I teach all day. <laughs> Thank you. How about Natalie? Yeah, hi everyone. I teach at um, Ridgewood High School and I've been teaching child development for five years, which is a one semester class open for freshmen through seniors. So it's a mixed bag. And this is my first year teaching tomorrow's teacher. It's a full year program. Um, and my whole student body are, are just, it's comprised of students that I personally invited to come attend. So thankfully I had 15 of them say yes, which was nice. So I have a pretty big program. Um, and we just started field placements right before the winter break. Um, so yeah, I'm just looking forward to, I'm kind of at the state now, the kids love going to the classroom, but you know, with those other two days, what are we going to do and how am I gonna keep them attentive is kind of where I'm at right now, but it's it's been going really well. The first quarter went really well. Oh, good. Well, hopefully we'll get some new ideas. I know that you and I met earlier, um, I yeah. say late summer, early school year. So hopefully there's some new ideas. And then right. the other one that I guess I can go off of it based on names is Kim, and then others will have to jump in for me. Hello, everybody. Um, so I am Kim Pasqualone, and I am uh, currently a teacher at Dumont High School, which is in Bergen County, New Jersey. And we have a program for juniors and seniors, 11th and 12th grade students. Um, we were thinking next year to actually make it tomorrow's teachers too, uh, like someone mentioned before, Kathy, I believe and um, have them work more in the field uh, their second year. Currently, we offer college credits through Fairleigh Dickinson and Seton Hall. So I had to be an accredited teacher in order to offer or have the, the class um, become accredited with the colleges. Also, we do placement early on uh, late September and the students go once a month because there's uh, more involved with the students going out of our high school to teach in the elementary schools and middle schools, we had to allow them only to go one full day a month. So they do nine visits, nine full visits and work with the teachers this year, they're working with them online also 
throughout um, the, the year program. So they've been out visiting, doing observations and getting, getting their feet wet uh, since beginning of October. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm gonna jump right in if that's okay. Um, I'm Kathy Latshaw. I'm a family and consumer science teacher at Southern Regional High School, which is Ocean County. Long Beach Island is part of our, um, that's an easy way to tell where we are, um, is part of our sending district. We're a seven through 12 district. So um, placement is difficult. But uh, before I say that, um, tomorrow's teachers I've been teaching for six years and um, it's open to juniors and seniors. There's no prerequisite, but I have about, usually about half of the students that I have have taken child development one, two, and three with me. So it's a culminating um, experience for them. Uh, we, because of being a seven through 12 district, have to find placements for elementary in our um, sending district, which is the Man Stafford Township, Manahawkin. Um, so we've been having difficulty this year getting into the schools because of um, the pandemic and you know not wanting visitors into their school district and we're a different district. So uh, it's been some difficult. And I, of course, when we went out on um, quarantine very, First day that we were quarantined in March of 2020 was the day that my students were supposed to start their field experience. So we haven't done anything for two years. So I'm really, really hoping that things clear up so that we can get them in there in, in the spring. So thank, thank you. you. I'm Nicole DiMattia. I'm a family consumer sciences teacher at JP Stevens High School in Edison. Last year, we piloted Tomorrow's Teachers. Um, it was all virtual, obviously. We weren't allowed to do uh, virtual observations, so that was challenging um, just to kind of try to find things for the kids to do, like observations online of pre-recorded things. Um, this year, we didn't have enough um, interest in the, in the class, so we are not running it. Um, so I'm really hoping to get it back up and running next year. Um, so I'm trying through my child growth and development classes to find students who are interested. It's only offered to seniors at our school. Great. Thank you. Is there anyone else on the call that would like to introduce themselves? Oh, I'm sorry. Karen. Hi, I'm Amory. Um, I apologize for the camera off. I ended up at home with a one-year-old, so it's a little distracting. I, I didn't want that um, for everybody. Um, the child development teacher at Passaic County Technical High School. We are a four-year program. Um, our students come in as freshmen. Um, and we go through all four years work, working as a goal towards the CDA. We have a head start on campus that our students work with starting freshman year, lesson planning, classroom environments, classroom management, all that good stuff. And then we have a partnership with the State County Community College where they take their college classes for the CDA senior year. Um, at that point, they have an externship out in local daycare centers in Patterson. Um, to maintain, get their full 180 hours because we have very limited time, of course, within the program. So they only get about 150 through the course of freshman through junior year. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, we have not had any practical experience um, on freshman through junior level since we've left school. The seniors are able to go through their externships as college students. So on that, we've been very lucky, but we are desperately looking for more places to connect with to get our underclassmen out. Um, it's a struggle for us in a, a normal year because we are the county school and many schools already have relationships with their local high schools and, and middle schools. So they don't have any extra room for those of us who are being bused from the vocational program. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you usually, Anne-Marie, that we don't have necessarily our own town to go off of, but we have to reach out to all the other towns. Um, okay, sorry, Karen, and I, I could have called on you too now that I see your name. I could have figured that one out. Sorry about that. You're next. <laughs> that, that's okay. Um, I might be the only person here from uh, higher education. I am, am from St. Elizabeth University. I'm the chair of the education department and I teach courses in the undergraduate and graduate level for initial certification. 
I have to tell you, I am so excited to hear that you are all saying the courses you love to teach are the teacher preparation classes. That's just so wonderful uh, to hear that. And I, and I thank you for all the work you're doing. And I do sympathize because I know um, we're not able to get our teacher candidates out for clinical experiences, only for clinical practice when they're actually in their last two semesters. So uh, I sympathize with you and I'm really praying that we'll see the end of this or a change at least during this semester. Absolutely, well, thank you for choosing this session. Is there anyone else before we move on? All right, so I realize, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's okay. Uh, my name is Callie Peters. Oh, okay. I work at Neptune High School. I'm the student assistance counselor there. We don't have a tomorrow's teachers program yet. Um, we're looking at doing that, but we do have a jumpstart education program. So it's a um, 60 hour program where students can earn 2.5 credits. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, geared at gaining um, experiential um, you know, options in this field. So we have all different ones and education is one of oh, those wow. options that we have. Yeah, I so we'll do the little things like they'll be able to go into the lower grade levels, do a lesson and stuff like that. But we're working on eventually hoping to build to do the teachers, tomorrow's teachers program. Fantastic. And definitely the Center for Future Educators would be a great resource to help your school move forward with that goal. So that's fantastic. So I know that it took quite a while to get through to everyone. But I think it's important because it's these types of experiences where you'll write down, oh, this person is someone I have to reach out to. Oh, let me send an, uh, an email over to this one, because I think that's how we're going to build our network. And so I wanted us to at least see who is on the call so we can start making those connections. So just very briefly, I'm going to go through a few of these slides um, just so we don't take too much time. But at my school, it is a career and technical education school. So the students are coming to us for one of the fields that they're interested in, mine being an education related field. Um, the picture on the left just embarrassingly enough shows me in high school in the same exact program. So when I was the student, as I said earlier at Morris Knowles, I came over to Morris County Votech part of the day to learn how to be a teacher. And I knew right away that I didn't want to teach preschool, even though that was the experience that I was given. Um, I knew right away I wanted to teach older kids. And so I went off to Montclair State and I got my degree in English secondary education but then was hired back here when they were full time to be an English teacher. So after five years uh, as an English teacher here, my former um, Academy for Education teacher actually retired and I was able to replace her. So I currently teach, uh, so when that happened, I should say, we went from this early childhood focus to more of a early childhood through 12th grade. So that students who thought, I don't really wanna teach little ones, but I still wanna be in this program, would get that experience. So this is, um, if you look in each of the boxes here, I have ninth and 10th, and the next slide I'll show you 11th and 12th. This is how we were able to figure out how to get everybody from learning preschool all the way through 12th grade. Um, and because I have three full years with my students, we meet every other day for 80 minutes. And then their senior year, as you'll see in a moment, and like I said, I shared this with you so you can take a look more closely later, but um, senior year, they don't have classes with me. That's when they have their work-based learning, which is a 120 hour requirement for everyone at our school. So not just anyone that's in the education program, but if you're in the culinary program, you still have to do a 120 hour internship. Um, throughout the first three years, we do a lot of on-site with our preschool, and then we this is all pre-COVID, of course. And then we did a lot of off-site stuff. So going to visit an elementary school, a middle school, um, a nonprofit, trying to get out into the community for community events. We did a lot of field experiences. So while we do utilize the Tomorrow's Teachers curriculum, we've had to sort of um, add in our own things to make it a three-year program for our students. Um, as a teacher, I think I mentioned this earlier on the call, um, I thought I was going to be the one at the front of the room telling the students everything that they needed to know and, you know, every day handing out those worksheets, opening up the textbook and truthfully over the years that has evolved tremendously. And I know that the best part of teaching a course like this is that a lot of what we can do is hands on. Now, when I started the program, I wasn't teaching it hands-on. I was using the textbook that I was given. I was giving out a lot of the, the stuff that's in the 
uh, workbooks that go along with it. Like I definitely didn't have my feet comfortable on the ground to know exactly how to make this experience for my students more authentic. And it was in the last few years that I started realizing all that theory stuff they can get when they go to college, really like deep understanding of why students learn a certain, or how students learn or why they want to learn that can all be figured out down the road right now. We just want to get them excited and interested in being educators. And when I say educators, I'm using that term loosely because some of my students want to work with children in other ways, like social work, psychology, as a guidance counselor. So when I say educator, it doesn't just mean teaching, although most of the curriculum is focused on teaching. I try to tell them that the skills you learn as a teacher are transferable in many different fields. So this presentation um, that I adapted for today was partly utilized when we talked just about creating authentic assessments and assignments for all subject areas. And the, the concept was, yes, we have theory we have to teach, but couldn't we teach that theory through hands-on experiences? And so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this slide, but just for anyone who's not familiar, authentic learning is something that resembles real, real world. And so, as I said, there is a lot in our curriculum that already does this, but what other things in the curriculum are we not utilizing real world or authentic learning for that maybe we could be? So the first example is I think what everybody has shared that they do have their students doing, and that is some form of teaching or tutoring. It even could be online at this point, right? We've Who would have thought five years ago that we would have our students doing virtual learning, right? That was never a thought that I had at least. Now we have students, I've had them working for Kumon and they were doing that virtually during uh, the pandemic. We've, our school fortunately had an on-site preschool, but um, a few years ago that was kind of adapted. And now I don't run the preschool. We have the Dover Public School District comes in and they run their own program. So when COVID hit, even though we were able to come back, they had their own rules and they were not letting anybody else into that lab. So that sort of gave us a little bit of a, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do now? Um, but it, it only opened more doors, I would say. So teaching and tutoring, I think everyone seems to do, but in a little while, I do have a blank slide in case you have additional ways that you can share with us that your students are getting that teaching and tutoring experience. The next is something I call field experiences. So when I refer to this in my classroom, it means going off site and doing something. The picture on the left is actually, um, Ashley, that's in Dominique's class. So I've had students who are in middle schools. This was a, a school that my friend, a classroom rather that my friend teaches. And I had a student matched with her for her internship. So we consider that a field experience. What we've now started to build in is junior year, getting our students to go on a more sustained schedule. So we would bus everybody to one school and I would spend one um, afternoon, I would say, I was gonna say full day, it's not full day, one afternoon with everyone at that placement. They would all scatter to their classrooms and I would check in on them. But the idea is that we're building to that senior year field experience. The picture on the right is just one of the schools that I've contacted. They had us come in, um, I think we were there maybe an hour and a half and it was a private a Montessori school nearby. So they had us come in, watch some of the teachers get involved. The director spoke with the students and that was an experience I could not give them because I don't have any training in Montessori, but we were able to go off site and, and see something different outside of what we know. The next thing, um, the, these pictures are from something we've started a few years ago because I partnered with Anne Marie McNamara, you might know her from Union County Votech. She had told me about Shadow Day that she hosts every year on Groundhog Day. And it was just a full day shadowing experience. So it's at the high school. Fortunately, we do have all these academic teachers and they all would, I would ask on a Google form who wants to sign up. I always offer lunch, which is fun. I'm a little disappointed this year because I don't think the teachers will wanna eat in the same room as others, and especially they don't want to be with the kids. So um, this year, I think we're going to do a grab and go lunch, but usually we would all eat together. And that's been the highlight of the day because the students really don't know that we're just normal people. Most of us normal, right? <laughs> but they get to see us in a different light. Like we'll sit there, we'll be, oh, my husband is texting me again, or, oh my gosh, I have to pick up cleats after school. Like they get to hear all the behind the scenes stuff that they normally don't hear about. So that they always say the most fun is I got to have lunch with all the teachers. It was so fun. 
Um, but this is an eight to three kind of thing. They stay with them during their prep. They go with them on their duty. And this year, based on feedback from those teachers who've signed up, is we need to start this earlier so that the week prior, the students can go in and co-plan with them. So thankfully this year, I'm, I'm on my game and I have it all set up. So they're co-planning the week of the 24th. And then February 2nd is Groundhog Day. So that's coming up. So any other shadowing type experiences we're gonna add on there. The next one is professional development. So when it comes to professional development, um, I'm trying to demonstrate for my students authentic learning. Like what are some authentic experiences that you can have as a future teacher? Well, one of them is getting training in the curriculum that's used in that preschool that's on site. So the picture on the left was um, before COVID, we had the creative curriculum trainer come in. I mean, it was pricey, but our school was able to utilize Perkins funding because we're a VOTEC. I think they cost um, $2,700 or something like that for one day. And the students went through the whole training. They, they, the trainer really was fabulous in that she's used to teaching um, other teachers, not teenagers, but she made it very hands-on. She had them up and moving and it was their first exposure to being a part of a PD. So they all, they thought they were very special that they had that opportunity. And the one on the right is just me giving the students different topics that then they turn key and will say, okay, you're going to present a professional development on your topic and you have to have these key things in it. So not only are you teaching us about the topic, but you need to provide us with a handout, you need to provide a video, um, you need to have some hands-on learning for the participants. And so we don't just say like, oh, you're presenting to your classmates. We try to really mock, make it a mock PD. So you are the experts, we're here in the audience and we're here to learn from you. Um, all right, teacher skills, like what are some just real basics? So our classroom, um, because it, I think our classroom has been in existence, our program has been like over 40 years. I think when I came in, it was 38 or something crazy. In the classroom itself, it was a huge preschool lab. It now looks a little different, but essentially on the whole wall are um, I think 12 or 13 bulletin boards. So the students were always working on those, but they were geared toward um, preschoolers, right? So now our classroom is set up a little differently. We're trying to sort of take over some of that space and give it to the high schoolers. Um, now they're able to make bulletin boards for all grade levels, all subject areas, trying to not just have the focus be on early childhood. We also do all of the bulletin boards in the hallways, which they love because then they're getting into a lot of social emotional stuff. They're putting um, club boards, so uh, sports boards, um, the principal will sometimes ask them for something specific that she's looking at doing. So they're getting a lot of experience doing that. But then beyond the bulletin boards, um, I try to have them model what real teachers are doing. So something like this, um, I saw, um, I think it was on Pinterest or Instagram, an idea where this teacher's just doing an anchor chart, but it was one that I thought during virtual learning would be really fun. So I had them created at home but the same thing carried over in the classroom. So when we were back in the room, I said, you know what, you're gonna make an anchor chart. So instead of it always being stand up, present and just regurgitate what you learned, now they have to come up with a way to visually show it to their classmates. So any of those teacher skills that a teacher would do elementary through high school, I try and have them do. Same go, the same thing goes for our PLCs. I use it loosely. I understand that a PLC is much more than just a book club, but at its most basic sense, I think it works for high schoolers. We have a very extensive library now that we've been able to acquire over the years. I just use Barnes and Noble and try to find any topics that I think would interest them from, like I had said earlier, social work, special education, psychology, educational policy, nonprofit, anything that would interest them with uh, the, the goal of working with children and families. And the students, sometimes they all pick a different book, but they still meet up in their meetings, in their groups, because they have a common theme throughout their books, or a group will all select the same book. And I try and help them by giving them a chart. We break it down. Here's um, by on these dates, here's what you're going to have read. And that's the English teacher in me that I think has to still kind of keep that structure, but they'll meet in groups. They'll pull magazine articles. They'll pull videos that go along with it. And now we've taken it one step further this year where I've given select dates that their groups will now present. So let's say the book, Not in My Classroom, that group has um, today as their date. They're gonna get up, they're gonna have a few slides ready to go. 
they'll have either a video or an article that will go along with their book and they'll share what they've learned so far. So even though they might have only read three chapters of it, they're going to give us a, the gist of what they've been learning about in those three chapters. So just as much presentation, research, uh, collaboration, that's all at the forefront of this program. And then this is one of my most fun ideas that I stole off of, I think, Teachers Pay Teachers. The kids in elementary school do this where the teachers have them do um, like a, what do they call it, a book tasting, and they set the whole room up like a um, Italian restaurant. I'm so jealous that I became a high school teacher because I'm like, how do I get to do these fun little things, right? So then I started thinking about it, and I'm like, what are my kids like? Where do they go? What would they think is fun? Oh, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, that kind of a theme. So I start searching and sure enough, you can do this with really anything, but they, they gravitated towards Starbucks. Um, so we turned it into the Starbucks cafe pre COVID. Cause you can see there's no masks. We invited all of the school. We invited their parents and our advisory council members and administration. They all signed up for different time slots because I wanted to make sure we could monitor how many people were going to be there. We tag teamed with culinary. So they made coffee, they had um, different little like pick up desserts and stuff. And then the students were experts, depending on what book they had read for their PLC meetings, they chose what they were going to talk about at their tables. So maybe like two to three students read about urban ed. So that was table one. So when you sat down at that table, the students each had a little display of the title of their book, two, um, two or three like main points explaining their book, and then two questions. So when you sat at that table, you knew you were going to have a dialogue with some students and then some strangers, whoever was there, to talk about those, those prompts. The kids loved it and they really, so that was their authentic audience, right? They could talk to their peers all day long. They were on their A game to talk to strangers. They were so professional. And they took it so seriously because they knew, oh my gosh, this is, this is the principal. This is the guidance counselor. This is my math teacher. Like I have to really know what I'm doing. The biggest critic in the room was um, Isabel's grandmother, who was a teacher for like 30 years, retired. She came in, they all knew Isabella's grandma's coming today. And she asked them some tough questions. So when we did the feedback afterward, they were like, it was so fun, but Isabel's grandma was so scary <laughs> because they knew that she was someone who really knew exactly what the profession held. So she, they were intimidated, I think, and they wanted to have the right answers. Another idea, a mock emergency meeting. So when our students interview all of these, we call them our VIPs, they go around, they come up with the questions, they meet with each of these, sorry, one student per person, I should say. So they meet with them, come up with, all right, this is what I know. If I was the principal, here are my roles in the school. And then we'll come together and we invite those VIPs to be in the room. We'll do a scenario. So I'll pull a card and we'll read like, um, student A kicks student B in the parking lot and there's a bloody nose, but like we read through the whole thing. Who would need to now attend a meeting afterward to figure out how we're gonna handle this situation? So then the students come to the table and they start discussing. And the best was um, our school is just, I know every school is different. In our school, the kid who was signed up as the superintendent was sitting down for every single, every single um, experience that we were talking about and I'm like, or scenario. And I'm like, our superintendent would not be there for that. Our superintendent would not be there for that. And finally, the superintendent piped up and he's like, you really filled your day with all these meetings. He's like, I would never be at most of those meetings. It doesn't get to me until later down the road. But it gave them, again, just exposure to the real people in those roles. And it allowed them to have that, um, just the opportunity to collaborate with them. Another one that's very similar is our mock IEP meeting. Same kind of thing. You take on one of these roles, we research it, and then we go through the entire IEP process. And I usually let our child study team help me with that because it gives them an opportunity to share all of their knowledge. And they're obviously much better at explaining it than I am to the students, but we sit down and we go through a mock IEP meeting, which is very similar to the last one. Um, this one, we created this just Union County, uh, Anne Marie and I trying to form some sort of collaboration. We came up with a teen teachers tournament we have participated in Skills USA. It wasn't always a great uh, example of how we wanted our students to showcase what they know. So we use some of the educators rising stuff. If you go on there, they have some competitions that they do. So we've 
kind of like modeled it after that. And it was just between the two schools. It was just a, a way for us to go visit another school, um, get to see other students, see what their classroom looks like, learn from them. Let me close this out, sorry. Okay, and I'm almost, at, okay, so now I'm at the end. I know we're like very short on time, but what I thought we could do is either people could go into the slides and just add other ideas. And if a few people wanted to share verbally, we could do that as well. We were talking about how it's, you, you have the opportunity with three full years to do a lot more exciting things right. if you're trying to do all the, um, the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I just was curious as to how many people really do all the mm -hmm. curriculum. I know I don't, but then again, I don't have many kids that do the dual credit. I do, but I don't get to it all. There's no way that you can possibly in one school year get through this entire, the Sarah curriculum. Um, I and to the point earlier, would it be, I think Jen said it, like get them to do the fun stuff and they'll get a lot of the. And I get that. And I appreciate that she said that. I just, I don't know. And I don't know that the college cares all that much, but if they're getting the college credit, I feel like I have to get them through as much of the curriculum as possible. And I know this year, like with the child development thing, since eight of the kids had already taken the class, I kind of made it do a um, like an independent study thing. Here's some here's some videos, and they were so lost; they had no idea how to function. I don't know if that's just two years being in COVID or what the story was. So I had to go back to direct teaching all that stuff about the, about the theories. And um, I mean, I'd love to do a mock IEP meeting. I am a special ed teacher. According to the curriculum, I have three days to do special ed. So, you know, I usually take a week or two because that's my area. And um, Julie, how do you have child development in your school too? That, yeah, that's what I said for next yeah. year. I'm making that a co or, or prerequisite for my class so I yeah. can take it out. I've also talked to spoken to the guidance supervisor about making this class a two year class, um, which would be great. But um, also, I know I'm limited because we're so short on special ed teachers that they're not going to let me have two, two, two periods to teach something else. So, um, so that's why I figured let's just start with taking that huge chunk off my lap. And most of them take the class anyway. So I think they are going to do that for me next year. One of the things that I had to do, just kind of like what you said, I, I was a little overwhelmed by our curriculum at first, is that... Um, in working with our child development teacher, um, we kind of worked with our administration and because like you were saying, you made it a precursor. Like I had certain things that she deals more with preschool and then I'm dealing more with elementary and secondary. And so I was able to take some of those earlier childhood stuff off of my plate and, and right. leave it into her child development curriculum. And then I was able to, um, you know, take on like, okay, you, you were introduced to this concept in child right. development. And then it kind of took some of those smaller, early, early right. childhood preschool stuff off my plate. And then right. I worked more on elementary and secondary. Yeah. I mean, I think what she does is primarily just the theory. She does Piaget. She does Bloom. She does, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I, I don't know that she gets that specific, um, but I will, once they make it the, the, pre, the prerequisite or co-requisite, and I know everybody's taking it within a year or so, or the same year as my class, then I will definitely have a sit down with her and figure out exactly what she's doing and what else I can kind of give her. Yeah, for sure. Jen, do you Thanks. mind if I jump in on that? Mm -mm. So. Julie, I'm the only one in my building that does this as well. Mm -hmm. And I try to get through page one to what 571 or whatever <laughs> it is. Okay. There are no prerequisites in my building, although we do have human behavior and we have psychology. Okay. Um, my program is only for seniors. So I get to do the fun stuff because that's how I do my assessments. So Bloom's taxonomy, make me a 3D model and show me what mm -hmm. it looks like, Yeah, right? Um, the fishbowl activities. I am just like you, I am special ed by nature. So five periods a day, I'm in replacement and ICR. And my last period of the day is tomorrow's teachers. So mm -hmm. 
I spent like a month on the special ed unit. <laughs> Me too, right. I had my child study team come in. We researched yep. so many different disabilities and what it means like, oh, well, what really is Asperger's and why, why autism and this and right. that and the other thing. And like, that's just the way it is. There's, right. Those are my expertise and that's right. what you're going to get the right. most of. Right. Um, but with the dual credit, I think it really depends on, and I know we do have some higher ed people here, which program you work with. I so work with, yeah. I work with Ryder. Ryder actually has you doing more work on top right. of my class. They have right. homework for Ryder. Yeah. What I like about it is, is it usually coincides with exactly what I'm mm -hmm. doing. That's so what the kids have told me too, yeah. They can use a lot of the same ideas. It's within the you know, same time frame, give or take a week or two. But some of the higher ed programs, if you take the course and you get an A in my course, right. then guess what? You've just fulfilled your ed 101. Right, right. So it might just be a little bit of, well, what should I do? Is it fair to the kids? Right. Really so much work for my class and then the college work. Right. Or do I pick this school and say, you know what? This might be better for me. Yeah. I can tone down some of the things. The mm -hmm. kids will succeed and they'll still get their right. credit. I like, along with what Jennifer had said earlier, is just to get them excited. I mean, I do skip the stuff at the end about trends and ethics and the history of education and one room school. I do because it's at the end and I don't get to that at all ever. You know, I focus on the theory, which next year I won't have to, but the theory and writing lesson plans. And, and we do a lot of the ed in the news because that's current and it gets them in the habit of talking with each other and presenting and that kind of stuff. Um, but they do a couple of lesson plans a year before they start their, their, um, their field placement. It's just, there's so much, so many wonderful things you could do in this program. And I just don't have enough time to do it all. And it's very frustrating. One of the things, and this might just help for everybody because I haven't been to the training. I've done the training like three times, which I don't have to, but I've done, right. I've done it anyway to meet more people, to do ideas. I mean, I've been with Kathy, I've been with Jen and all these other people. Um, one of the things from Sarah is this ongo these ongoing activities, mm -hmm. right? Those 11 bullet point activities. I've turned that into a, a blog. Mm -hmm. So all of my students now blog these 11 activities and they do it once a month. Mm -hmm. so teacher visibility, go to a game, go to the school play, go somewhere and write me, write about it. Right. You know, the Twitter, the, the read alouds, all of that. And I'm like, guys, don't forget, you know, mm -hmm. next Friday, your blog is due, your blog is due. And then I can touch on it a little bit, but then I can see how they're um, thinking in the blog. And then I'll say, Hey, you know, um, during that observation, I don't really want you to put the teacher's name because mm -hmm. you know their language was this or that mm -hmm. or whatever it might be. Um, and then I'll call individual conferences, but the blog helps me cut out a lot of okay. where I don't have to spend three days on different yeah. activities. All right. Plus they do that at the college level. Right. I, go, oh, I think a lot of schools are doing blogs or websites or what right. have you um, at the next level too. Right. I love that suggestion. I'm going to look into mm -hmm. that. That'll be next year. You'll see that in my slides. <laughs> And thank you everybody for your ideas and for your time. And thanks for coming to this session. I'll see you in the next one.